Coroners play a key role in their communities, and you might be voting them in. But what do you really know about coroners? They're part of a region's most serious situations and yet have minimal requirements. In most states, all you need to be is 18 or older and live in the county you want to serve. No degree required. The role dates back all the way to 1194. Texts from medieval England explain that back then they were called crowners and had the responsibility of documenting claims alongside the sheriff for the king to review. Today, they are part of investigations often involving suspicious, unexplained, or unexpected deaths. And in some regions, they are the only person legally allowed to arrest sheriffs today. Chandra Bishop is a regional community health plan coordinator in Illinois and is also an endorsed candidate for coroner in her region by Run for Something. Hi, I'm Chandra, and I have nearly a decade of experience as a public health professional. Let's talk about basic responsibilities, the most obvious being going to the scene of a death. What happens there? So coroners investigate deaths, whether they be homicides, suicides, suspicious deaths. They collect all the evidence and evaluate it to make a determination of how that person died. They also interact with victims' families, but I believe the coroner can do a lot more. So coroners are making some major decisions from the very beginning, but clearly some solid medical experience is needed. So who is it that's conducting the actual autopsy? Like most elected positions, other than the state's attorney, there's really no educational requirements. Um, and many of the offices function as administrators. The coroner doesn't perform the autopsies. They um, enlist pathologists to do that. And so again, you're, the coroner is working as an administrative role, um, looking at pieces of evidence and making a determination. I do believe that um, it does take some sort of um, knowledge and training for this, and that's why most coroners um, go through a, a training once they're elected to be able to know how to run the office. What's the significance of this decision making, especially when we're looking at police involved deaths? We see cases like George Floyd, which involves some critical details in the cause of his death. We're seeing how critical that is, especially now. For instance, the initial coroner's report ruled out asphyxiation. And anyone who saw the George Floyd video know that the lack of oxygen was critical in his death. Is the role of a coroner intended to be political? Coroner shouldn't be necessarily political because you're treating everyone no matter what party they're, they're coming from. It is crucial for a coroner to be independent, not to be so connected to either institutions that they are working with. And so it's important that the, the autopsies and um, the investigations around deaths are done with care, with um, integrity, um, with uh, accuracy, because um, the way in which a person has died, they should have justice if there is a suspicious death. In regards to representation, what do we know about who makes up the nation's coroners? So unfortunately, there are not great statistics on um, who makes up coroners, um, but it is undoubt undoubtedly a male-dominated field. You don't find a lot of women. You typically see mostly um, Caucasian men in the row. So it's just, it's the epitome of a good old boys club sometimes. Of course, representation matters in every aspect, but specifically for voters, why is it important for them to keep that in mind when voting for coroner? So when your office holders look like the community they represent, voters would have more confidence in the decisions um, that they come to. Because if a coroner comes to a scene um, after you know maybe a shooting, community violence, that sort of thing, then they have to be culturally sensitive to what has happened. They need to be aware that maybe this is not the first time a shooting has happened in this area or to this family or et cetera. And so being aware of what the community is experiencing, um, that should also dictate how you approach um, the scene, the case, everything, um, the victims and the, um, the witnesses involved even. Once elected, how long can a coroner serve for? In Illinois, the coroner's term is four years, but there is no re-election limit. 
and a lot of corners fly under the radar during election time. So we know there's a lot of data from deaths circulating in a coroner's office. Is there value in making that publicly accessible? There's data should be shareable um, and, and accessible to the public in general. For instance, if the coroner's office is seeing an um, increase in suicides among, you know, 18 to 24 year old males, then that data should be given to the um, organization who's working on suicide prevention and say, hey, we've got a spike in this age group in this part of our county. Everything about this rule ultimately comes down to public health. So what's the most important takeaway you want voters to gain from this? That public health is literally everywhere, especially during this time of the pandemic. Um, a lot of people now see the the importance of public health. And voters should also pay close attention to the local offices on their ballots too. Um, I'm certain the coroners in a lot of communities could be working to do more to help prevent deaths.